Hey everybody, my name is Taylor from SoSo Cycles and welcome back to the MotorSwap Ducati project. I had a box show up full of parts that I've been waiting on for quite a while and I think you guys are gonna be pretty dang stoked about it. So, let's just get into it. So, some of you may have seen a few pictures I posted of this thing sitting in front of the shop with the body on it. And I guarantee you did not miss much except for a few very frustrating hours in the shop with a drill and shaky hands drilling through very expensive carbon fiber fairings. But um, I had to get the body on to give pictures of it to my friend Nuno to start designing a livery. And I hope you know who I'm talking about, but his business name is more affectionately known as Hello Cousteau. Uh, Nuno has been doing liveries for motorcycles and helmets, no most notably for Bell helmets. And I'm very honored that he's chosen to do the livery for this thing. So he is starting to work on it. I've seen a few preliminaries. I'm really excited about it. But the point is, the body has been mounted, so it'll go on and I'll give you some glamour shots of that thing later. But for now, let's get to the flywheel and a few other things, and then let's get to the magical box of parts, because I'm holding back, not diving in right now. But let's get, uh, let's get to some other stuff first, and then we'll get to the box that I've been drooling over for a few months now. So. And here is the light and flywheel in question. You can see here it already has the magneto attached to it. This is the flywheel part, and you'll see how much has been shaved off of it when I get the other one out. And as you can see on the back, here is the starter gear. It still has the sprag clutch installed, so this will make it really, really easy to put in. And being that I've done this a time or two, let's see how quickly I can get it done. And here are the flywheels. You can see the lightened one is on the left, the stock one is on the right, and you can tell almost instantly that there is a heck of a lot of material missing on the left one. And the whole point here is to reduce rotating mass and make cornering a lot easier. It makes the bike tip in a lot more smoothly, uh, you no longer have to muscle it, and a lot of people have told me this is actually the single biggest handling upgrade they've done to their bikes, besides lightweight wheels, which we also have. So this thing should be just a dream to ride when it's done. Always remember to put 3-Bond on your case covers or they will leak. To finally put a pin in the rear brake caliper situation, I have picked up this Brembo P2 rear caliper. And you eagle-eyed viewers out there will notice that it says Birkenbo and not Brembo, and that is because it is fake. I picked this up from a friend of mine for 50 bucks to see if a Brembo P2 would actually fit, and you can, as you can see, it did not. It required a little bit of shaving, which I will take a polishing wheel to and buff it out a little bit, but surprisingly enough, this Birkenbo P2 is actually a really nice quality caliper. So I'm gonna leave it on there until I can find a real one. I mean, who uses rear brakes anyway? And because I do not know when to leave well enough alone, we have this rarity. This is originally meant for the 916 Racing or the 748R, and as such is very hard to find, but this is a lightweight wheel nut. And as you can see, the crenellations on the top of that thing are pretty far apart, 
And that is only because it is meant to be used in conjunction with these, which is the whole reason I wanted to find one in this first place. And unfortunately, that nut on the right there that you see is meant for the sprocket side, which I found out later, but we can at least get the pin in, which is a little tougher because that's a stock nut, but it just goes right through there, eventually. And the clip side clips into the little groove there, and that looks so much cooler than the stock clip. And next in the set of rarities from the box, a set of RS rear sets with detachable folding foot pegs. I've wanted a set of these for a very long time and it took a while to find a set that was not an aftermarket copy, but these are real, honest to God, RS foot pegs. They even come with the carbon fiber backing plates that are correct for the rear sets and the set of levers. Now this bike will be GP shift and fully adjustable. So let's get them on there. And as you can see, with a quick loosening of the eccentric foot peg mount, you can spin the foot peg around until it's comfortable for you. Pretty nice. And don't you worry, to match these beautiful rear sets, we also have a set of gorgeous hand controls from Brembo in the form of some RCSs. But before we get to those, it's time to change the clutch slave cylinder. I have one here that's a little bit special that I'm pretty excited about. Some of you know what I'm gonna pull out of this box, some of you may not. Yep, that is the much sought after Ducati Course clutch slave cylinder. I'm pretty happy with that one. Look how shiny. And being that we have two different clutch push rods, because I'm not sure which one this fits, being that we have two, we have the 748 one and the 1098 one, we can make this work. And it's just a little icing on the cake like this that I think is gonna make this bike really, really stand out and be really fun to ride. So, let's get it on there. Now we come to the piece de resistance of that box that I got. I know you guys have been looking at the back of this bike thinking, man, that Showa, oh, Taylor, my goodness, that Showa. I know, it's crusty, it's old, but it's been a placeholder until I could find the next thing, which I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna prove because this is an Olin shock from the FO2 era, which is World Superbike, British Superbike, and customer racing RS bikes. Um, I looked for a while for one of these, and I thought this would probably be better than spending a bunch of money on a brand new one. Um, but this actually is a Ducati Course spec uh, World Superbike rear shock, or RS, BSP, whatever. Um, but anyway, it is sprung correctly for that swing arm. It is the correct shock that we're supposed to use for the exact setup that we have. So I figured we'd just look for one of these. And it's real pretty. You can see it actually has telemetry holes, so you can put a telemetry thing on it, which is pretty cool. Um, we will never need that. And it also, as you can tell, has been clearanced a little bit. Let's see if we can get this focused. It has been clearanced a little bit for large diameter exhausts of that era, which is pretty cool. So some, some race team somewhere clearance this thing to get on, on a bike. So anyway, let's get it on there.
shock. I mean, it's pretty cool. Okay, and last thing on the list for today because the next few weeks are gonna be a hard charge to get this thing done, or the next few days are gonna be a hard charge to get this thing done. Uh, I'm gonna do one more thing. Uh, I'm gonna put on these guys. So, our friends at Brembo were kind enough to send us some RCSs. Um, so, we're gonna get the RCS Masters mounted up and then we're gonna call it good. Let's do it. You know what time it is. I mean, it, it no longer is starting to look like an RS. It actually, look, you know what it looks like? It actually looks like uh, Ducati's late 90s World Superbike bikes in winter test livery. And that's, uh, I'm okay with that. Anyway, um, I keep getting lost staring at it. It's just the light in here, it's playing off the curves, and man oh man. If you're a Ducati nerd and this thing doesn't get your heart beating a little faster, I don't, I don't know what will. But anyway, uh, we still have a long ways left to go. Um, we still have wiring and fueling in the immediate future. I know I've been putting up the wiring and I'm sure a bunch of you know exactly why. Wiring is not, not my favorite. Um, but the big news here is also that we will not be at hand-built. I'm sorry for those of you that were gonna come. Um, I just didn't think we could get this thing in time and have it in a reasonable, presentable shape. I didn't wanna have to ghetto anything or have it not run or anything like that when we got there. So we did also get accepted to the one show here in Portland and that's at the end of April. Um, I urge you to come to that show. It's a really, really good one. I've always wanted a bike in that show and it just happens to be that it's my dream bike. So that's pretty cool. Um, and the last thing, before I forget yet again and have to apologize to a whole crew of people that have helped me through this entire stupid build, Thank you so much to the crew from 916 Series Engine Conversions Facebook group. Uh, if you are ever looking into doing one of these and swapping a motor of any kind into any kind of tambourine bike, uh, get on there. It's just called 916 Series Engine Conversions on Facebook. Um, Roy and everybody in there is wonderful. Everybody has been so helpful kind of getting through this and answering all my stupid little problems, like the littlest, dumbest thing that you can think of, somebody has the answer. It's, it's really wonderful and a truly good group of people who have been also very supportive through this whole build the whole time. And if you look right now, the cover of the Facebook group is, uh, is this thing. Anyway, until next time, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Do all the YouTube stuff if you want to, but I'm just happy to know that you're all watching and enjoying it. Um, yeah, until next time.